So today I'm going to be installing a magnet drive coupling on the 60 horsepower chilled water pump. You can see we've already removed the fixed coupling. Um, I've still got to clean the shafts up, install half keys, and then I will uh, start the installation process. This one over here is one that's been completed. And here's a picture of the actual coupling. This is the uh, load hub has been removed, but you can see the coupling. The nice thing about these magnet drive couplings is uh, there's no physical connection between the driver and the load. They've got this uh, rotor here that's got very heavy, very strong permanent magnets. And then the, uh, the outer part here is a conductor. It's got these copper plates. And so the way it works is the magnetic field that's created between the magnet rotor and the conductor um, causes the uh, load side to spin. It spins at a slightly slower rate than the motor, so there's just a little bit of slip, and, and because of that, you get quite a bit of energy savings. Uh, the other thing is um, this gap here. This gap is what creates the slip, and it's adjustable. This one's got about an eighth of an inch. These spacers right here, you can pull these little washers out and put them on the inside to increase the gap, which in turn increases the, uh, the slip, gives you even more energy savings if you can get by with a little bit less flow. So anyway, I'll be installing that. Like I say, once I get the uh, coupling installed, then I've got to fabricate a new aluminum guard because the old guard is too small. These couplings are fairly large. So anyway, I'll be uh, shooting some video and taking some pictures as I go. So here you can see the uh, shafts have been uh, polished. And you see right there that uh, half keys have been installed. These new, these new couplings use a B-lock uh, clamping type system. And uh, so there's no key keyway in the coupling itself so you've got to install these half keys for balance purposes so that one's been cut and installed cleaned up and same with this one so now I'll start installing the uh, hub on the pump itself okay at this point uh, the uh, load side hub has been installed the uh, b-lock uh, fasteners have all been sequentially torqued in uh, four passes to 8.7 foot-pounds. So now what I do is I've installed a dial indicator here and I'm just gonna check the runout on the face of this uh, of this hub. It shouldn't, uh, at this point, it's this is just a check that I do. Uh, the installation manual calls for checking the runout on the face of the uh, conductor when the coupling is all assembled. But I typically do this just to find out where I'm at. usually here looking for no more than a couple thousandths. The book says on the face of the coupling no more than five thousandths out on the face of the of the conductor but uh, this looks good we're less than a thousandth here. So at this point I'm going to uh, install the coupling on this hub. So I've got the uh, coupling installed on the load side hub now. All of the hub uh, coupling bolts have been torqued. This would probably be a good time to point out the jacking screws. You see these jacking screws that are in here? That's what maintains the gap, that eighth inch gap between the, uh, the magnet rotor and the conductor face. Like I said, this is about an eighth of an inch gap. When, uh, when the coupling is all assembled and everything is bolted in place, those jacking screws get removed. And then uh, this conductor moves independently of the rotor. So what I'm going to be doing now is uh, moving the motor into position and uh, starting to get the, uh, the coupling, uh, the driver side hub, installed on the shaft. I'll actually remove that hub right there from the coupling and I'll install that on the shaft. But I'm going to have to reposition the motor on the base here, so I'm going to have to uh, move it into place, put some marks on the base, and then slide it back out so I can drill the holes in the base. Well, I 
have the motor in place now. Uh, I've got the, uh, everything's in alignment. I'm getting ready to uh, put the bolts in the uh, driver's side hub here where it attaches to the conductor. And uh, what you need to do with this is, each one of these bolts needs to have just a little bit of blue Loctite uh, to hold them tight in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Once I get that, once I get the bolts done, get those um, sucked up into place, I'll torque those and uh, move the B-lock into place and I will torque all those bolts and we will be just about finished. One thing I forgot to mention on these couplings is that everything has alignment marks. Kind of hard to see, but there's X's engraved in the surface and it's very important that everything be in alignment because these things are pre-balanced at the factory. So if uh, those alignment marks aren't, uh, aren't lined up properly, it's gonna vibrate. All right, all the, uh, all the bolts are torqued. V-locks are torqued. Everything is ready. The motor's been tightened down. All that's left to do now is remove the uh, jacking screws and fire it up. The app looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull all these jacking screws out and then we will give it a test run. So I got the pump fired up. Everything looks great. Motor's running nice and smooth. All that's left to do now is fabricate a new aluminum guard and get it bolted in place and put it online.